Welcome everyone to Protective Diets Nutritional Intervention Cooking Class, sponsored by Humana. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. And I just want to reintroduce myself. I'm Julie Marie. I'm the creator of the Protective Diet. Protective Diet is recipes to help to reverse heart disease, diabetes, um, autoimmune diseases, obesity. I have a history of obesity and heart disease myself. So I applied these recipes that I've created that are free of saturated fat and sugar, food additives, and animal products and had incredible results with my own personal health and then I've gone on in years past until now helping other people to do the same. And what we're doing today is we're celebrating Cinco de Mayo this week, so we're doing tostadas. And my tostadas, I make them so that they're free of oil, and free of dairy products and meat, so they'll be a lot better for you. So we're gonna start off with a pint of cherry tomatoes. And I put them, I used a toaster oven to roast them, and a jalapeno. I had a, well, this is a jalapeno, if you're not familiar with what a jalapeno is. And I just put them on a baking sheet. You could do this in your oven and put it on the top rack under the broiler and just keep an eye on it and let them char, let them turn black like this. That's gonna add a lot of flavor and sweetness to the, the recipe. So we're just traditionally, salsa mocajete, mocajete means mortar and pestle, that's one of these. Traditionally it would be ground down by hand in there. We're gonna save ourselves some energy and time and we're gonna put it in the blender. And what I like to do is put about half of the tomatoes into the blender and process them smooth with the rest of the ingredients so it mixes nicely. And then I'm going to add the other half of the tomatoes and just pulse it so it has a texture to it like it would in traditional salsa mocha hete. And I'm going to take the seeds out of the jalapeno because not everyone can handle the heat and I want this to be enjoyable for everyone. The seeds are where all the heat is. And I love spicy food, so I put the seeds in when I normally make it. But I want this to be enjoyable for everyone. And I'm going to put, maybe I'll cut back the jalapeno a little bit. We're going to add the second half of the jalapeno to pulse with the tomatoes. We're also adding a clove of garlic. And I like to use a garlic press. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. It just makes chopping garlic really easy. And that way, my blender, it would probably blend up the whole clove, but it eliminates the risk of a big chunk of garlic and a bite of salsa. Little sea salt. We're gonna blend this up. similar to a local restaurant salsa that we have here, Uncle Julio's. Does anyone go there to that restaurant? It's, it's a, kind of a copy off of that, but it is a traditional Mexican salsa. And then we're going to move on to uh, making the next recipe is going to be the unfried beans. Traditionally, 
we would be making refried beans, and the beans would be sauteed in a pan of oil and onions, and then they would be mashed as they were cooked. Well, I'm going to eliminate that oil and save us hundreds of calories and save us a lot of saturated fat. Saturated fat has been connected to the development of many diseases. So we're eliminating that out of a diet when we're eating protective diet recipes. So I'm just draining the beans off of any liquid. You could rinse them if you want to reduce the sodium even more. And I'm just going to use this blender that I made my salsa with because there's all this wonderful flavor in there. We're not going to waste that. So we have a can of black beans. We have two teaspoons of chopped dried onion. We have a quarter cup of water that's going to get everything blending together, get it spinning. We also have a clove of garlic. Not a lie. <laughs> but it's so clear, and easy to understand. 
true. That just yes. means you're a good teacher, oh, Julie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you. Nice. <laughs> I need one. I need one thing. If this calendar. I have one question. Who's selling this blender? Blendtec. You can find this blender uh -huh. online. That would be your best okay, price. The store is not selling. The stores don't carry this one. Can you wash that out? Thank you. Um, yeah, they, these are these are definitely. This would if you purchase this blender, you will never purchase another blender again. They have a seven-year warranty. Um, I'm not sure what the what is the refurbished price. I think it's two seventy-five. Is it two seventy-five yeah. for the blender? If you that bought it new, it's almost four hundred. So it's a really good deal. So I this one is a refurbished one. So. Basically, someone returned it and then they resold it. It's, oh. it's great, and it still has a seven-year warranty. Three ninety-nine ninety-five on oh. their website. Oh, 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 so if you're thinking about getting a high-speed blender, I love it because all the recipes that I make, it just makes them so smooth, the salad dressings, it emulsifies. But if you're using a classic blender, you'll just add more liquid. It's like a uh, Vitamix. A Vitamix is the same same uh, motor, just a different company. I prefer the Blendtec over the Vitamix because of the jar. It's very difficult to get the bottom of right. the of your blend out of Vitamix. And it doesn't fit so well underneath the cabinet uh, door. So if you store your blender on the counter and the cabinet's there, you can't push it all the way back with the Vitamix. The Vitamix is a wonderful piece of equipment in the kitchen. If you have it, good for you. If yeah. you're deciding between the two, I would go for the Blendtec just because of being able to get that refurbished price and it fits under the cabinet and the bottom's easier to scrape out. And it has buttons instead of all those levers. I've, I've worked with both of them, but this one's my favorite. So the next recipe we're going to do is the natto cheese sauce. So, or actually, I'm going to show you the tostadas themselves. I'm using El Milagro tortillas. These are made from corn and water and lime. Those are the only ingredients. And they're all natural, whole grain product. And these are local to us in Chicago. We're very lucky to have them. If you're not in Chicago, I suggest looking for either a Mexican grocery store or a tortilla company online. And you can buy these preservative-free tortillas. And um, they're very inexpensive. And we can make our own tostadas by taking them and just placing them whole on a baking sheet. Couldn't give me simpler than this recipe. These are like bread in my house. I eat corn tortillas all the time. I don't like to talk about calories because when you're eating this way, when you're eating a protective diet, you really can't over consume your calories per meal. You could never exceed four to 500 calories a meal without being so full. But these are only 50 calories each and they're loaded with whole grain corn. It gives you lots of energy. So you're just gonna put them on a baking sheet and you bake these 400 degrees for about 12 to 13 minutes. You want to make sure they're very crispy like this. Otherwise, they'll be hard to chew if they're still a little bit soft. So put them back in, keep a close eye on them. Everyone's oven is a little bit different. I'd say 12 to 14 minutes is generally where it works out. If you want to add salt to these, like traditional tostadas, you'll take some sea salt. Sprinkle them on lightly. And then take a little spray bottle with water and just got this on lock or something. And just mist them. And that's going to get the salt to melt and stick and then go ahead and bake them. The other way is if you don't have a spray bottle, just wet your fingertips under the running water of the sink and just go like this. And that helps the salt to stick to the top. Put them in the oven and bake them. And these will stay nicely. You can bake a bunch of them and, and put them in a, a airtight container or a Ziploc bag. The other way to enjoy these, I just want to give you this little tip that's not with this recipe, is take your full stack of tortillas. And 
and you're going to cut them into two cuts so you get four pie shapes and bake these on your baking sheet and there's your tortilla chips so you can make loaded nachos I call them put all the toppings on your nachos this is a little bit more work than the tostadas but um, Jerry and I tend to eat these on a regular basis as our snacks so these are baked tortilla chips you're going to save yourself a lot of money by baking your own tortilla chips versus buying the fried bag chips because these packages are anywhere from 40 to 50 cents so you're you're saving yourself a lot of money than buying the bag chips and the brand was this one is El Milagro there's a few brands out there I want you to look for corn tortillas not the not the wheat tortillas the wheat tortillas have oil and a lot of additives in them to keep them flexible these are wonderful you could also use these for tacos you can just warm them in the oven or just warm them on the stove in a pan and fill them with anything you can make little wraps so they're a great great addition to your diet a nice whole grain addition so that's what we're going to use to layer up our tostadas so then we'll move on to the cheese sauce. This is a pretty innovative cheese sauce because we're not using any dairy products. So we're eliminating all the cholesterol, all the saturated fat, and this is loaded with fiber and flavor. So we're gonna start off with one can of pumpkin or you could roast an acorn squash. I didn't have an acorn squash with me to give you an example, but you would take the acorn squash, you cut it in half, Face it down on your baking pan and roast it. The directions are there. About 30 to 40 minutes, 425 degree oven. And then you would scrape out the, take off the, scrape out the flesh into your blender. So today we're just going to take the shortcut and use a can of pumpkin. This is loaded with nutrients and fiber. This is a great recipe for your kids to get them to eat vegetables in the form of cheese. The other great way to enjoy this is in, after we make it, I put it in a squeeze bottle. And kids love to squeeze this on all their vegetables. They'll eat vegetables because they get to squeeze the cheese on it. It's a great uh, little trick. So we have a cup of organic soy milk. When you're buying soy milk, I want you to look for soy milk that all it contains is organic soybeans and water. I want your plant-based milks to be free of food additives, of natural flavor, um, carrageenan, they're thickeners. We don't need that. We just need soybeans and water. That's simple and clean. And then we're going to add a teaspoon of chopped dried onion, of sea salt, another clove of garlic. There's a lot of garlic in Mexican food, and garlic is so good for us. So this is a great way to get it into our diet. And then we're also adding an arbol chili to this cheese sauce. If you don't like spice, leave it out. I'm just going to add half so that we have a little flavor, but nothing hot. When I make this cheese sauce at home, I usually put two chilies in it. If, you if you're not fond of spicy food, keep trying it. It might grow on you, and it's very good for you. So we're going to use the juice of half of a lemon. I just pre-juiced it to make it easy. You could use one of these little reamers or if you have a flat juicer or these, these new press ones to make it easier. The lemon's gonna give it that tang of cheese. And then a very important ingredient is nutritional yeast. And we use this in the soup recipe if you were at the last class. And this gives it the cheesy flavor. This also adds a lot of B vitamins to the dish. And it's a nutritional supplement. If you're looking for this in the, in the grocery store, I want you to go to either Whole Foods or Fruitful Yield, like a health food store, the vitamin shop. They all carry this. You can find it in the bulk bins at Whole Foods, or you can find it in a can like this at your health food store. And it's an excellent addition to the diet. I like it sprinkled on popcorn. It's just got like a powdered cheese flavor.
about the blend tech versus the Vitamix is it turns off on its own when it's done blending. It blends through a cycle where I can walk away from my blender in the kitchen. So that's one of the other reasons why I like it. But you can see this, it looks just like cheese sauce and when you taste it, you let me know what you think. Everyone loves this sauce. It's one of the most popular recipes on protectiddiet.com. to get onto the site. It helps to reduce spam traffic for us. But we won't send you emails or anything like that with your email address. It's just to get um, access to the recipes. There's some recipes on protectivediet.com that are, they'll say exclusive recipe in the title. Those are page subscriber recipes. We do have a subscription for um, $19.97 a month and you get access to all the exclusive recipes. A new recipe is, is uh, provided to you every week, and we do online courses that are an hour on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time. So the, these classes, there's an archive of a ton of classes. There's 27 classes um, that started in November, and they show you and guide you how to stock your cabinets, how to eat right, how to make um, just make this lifestyle really easy and doable. And on protectivediet.com, check out the testimonials page because that's filled with protective diet education students, subscribers that have written their, they wrote down their stories and where they came from and the challenges they had and the diseases they reversed. So it's pretty inspiring. On the screen there, you can see what protective diet looks like. That's our web page. So then all the recipes you can find right there under recipes, it will show you all the hundreds of recipes that are available. Show them the testimonials page. Okay. That would probably be good. Oh, they have to put in a half. There yeah. you go, right there. Yeah, there's some cheese sauce. So now what we're going to make is the last recipe to layer up our tostadas, and we're making what I named sour cream dream, because this was a dream to me to have sour cream. It was one of my favorite toppings. I, I think I ate more sour cream than potato when I had a sour cream and potato. <laughs> but, um, so I've, I've remade it where it's all that it contains is tofu and lemon juice. It's almost kind of crazy that it, it tastes as good as it does, as simple as it is. I'm just going to drain off this liquid. Hopefully it'll all fit in here. I just want to show you, it's not black. This is black from the beans. <laughs> the liquid around tofu is a clear liquid. And many people ask me if they include that liquid in the cooking. And that's just a preserving liquid. We never use the liquid in the tofu in any of our recipes. So we're just going to take the tofu out and break it up a little in our blender. This is farm tofu. Farm. Extra. This one's extra firm, and I always buy my tofu organic, and um, that eliminates any GMO um, soybeans if it's labeled organic, and this one's actually labeled organic and non-GMO if you're interested in that. But any tofu is better than no to tofu. Don't worry about it. If you don't have organic or non-GMO, it's still very good for you. Including soy in our diet, research has shown that it reduces our risk for common cancers. It reduces the risk for breast cancer. It reduces the risk for prostate cancer in men. So the two number one cancers, if we include about two ounces of soy in our diet daily, it will reduce our risks. There are a lot of studies, or a lot of articles published, not based on studies, that soy caused cancer, and that was a very horrible misconception because if you look at communities that are soy based in Asia there is no cancer it's not the soy that's causing the problem it's actually loaded with phytochemicals that reduce our risks for cancer I include it in my diet every day within the form of soy milk in recipes I mix it in or in tofu so we're going to add the juice of one whole lemon which is generally a quarter cup if anyone's interested or four tablespoons 
and then we're going to blend this. It's that simple. And you want to blend this until it gets nice and smooth. If you don't have a really good blender, you might want have to add more liquid to it, maybe some water or extra lemon. Or you could do this in the food processor and try and see if you can get it smoother that way. But this recipe is really great if you can use a high-speed blender. But I'm going to now show you how to assemble a tostada, and then you guys can come up and um, make your own. So I put them in order to make it easy for you. Now you can add more toppings to this. There's a lot of recipes on protectivediet.com for additional toppings. You could also top them with frozen corn that you defrosted. You could add other salsas. There's salsa verde that's made with tomatillos. You could add, um, there's a beefless taco filling that's a great recipe. You could put that on there. But this is typical to use the refried beans and salsa. Not so typical to use my made up cheese sauce. But you're just going to layer this up. And put whatever you like and skip whatever you don't like. This is cilantro and onions here. And we have some, some shredded romaine lettuce, and some salsa roja, and some sour cream dream. So if you guys want to come on up and make your tostadas and help yourselves enjoy. And while they're assembling, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Let me get your plate, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions about any of the recipes or about the diet? You rinse the tofu. Yeah. Yeah. She's suggesting when you take the tofu out of the box to rinse it off first. I do that too at home because there's some preservatives in the liquid. So that's a good idea. It's not gonna hurt you to eat this liquid, but it's not part of a recipe. But she takes it a step further by rinsing the block off, which is nice too. It eliminates some of the additives. Great tip. Pursuant to this, you get in it is. It is. They add, put in the they pasta. add um, yeah, bacon it's in the frying pan. It's actually a seawater extract bake it. to it to preserve yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So it's not yeah. like a chunk of well, You could yeah. tell yeah. 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 eating the tofu yeah. is soaking in it. Yeah. But it keeps I use it a lot of tofu. And it keeps yeah. it fresh. So, but um, tofu is a wonderful thing to stock up in your refrigerator because the expiration date on it is generally months out of what it is in the store. So it's always been handy to make a sauce. Are you guys missing this is something? Napkins. I know everyone is. There's missing. paper towels here. <laughs> oh, Kristen has napkins. She has everything. Are there any more questions? You guys are so quiet today. Usually I'm bombarded with questions. Has anyone tried any of the recipes off a of protective diet? You have. What, which ones have you tried? We did the orange juice um, salad dressing. Oh, you did. How did you like it? It was good. Really? Good. Yeah, there's a lot of great recipes on there to help you on with, you know, whatever, just improving your health, or if you have goals to lose weight or reverse disease, lower your cholesterol. It's very, very easy. Oh, so I know. Eating this way I just had a phone call from a lady. Or blood pressure. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just had a phone call from a lady. Oh, yeah. It seems so it reasonable, does. but it seems like a lot of work. Yes, it does. It does. It does. First, I would say the first 30 days is kind of confusing because it's all new ingredients. But when you stock your kitchen to make the recipes from this website, we're using the same ones over and over again, and you'll see that. I'll use those chopped dried onions a lot. I'll use the yeast. The milk is always the same milk. Yeah. And those are all shelf stable. The tofu, I, it's in a couple recipes, some of the creamier recipes. Yeah. It's got an expiration that's usually two months out at the grocery store. So if you buy a couple boxes and you're not sure what you're gonna make with it, you can keep it in your fridge. And when you get to a recipe, you can, you know, you'll, you'll eventually get to a recipe where you need it. Um, in my 
in the Protective Diet Education courses, I teach people how to stock their cabinets so that they have um, over 100 meals they can make with the same ingredients in different combinations. Right. It cuts your grocery bills in half. Oh, that was the same thing. It's yeah. very inexpensive to cook a meal like this. We're talking a can of beans, a can of pumpkin, a box of tofu, some tomatoes, some shredded lettuce, and this can feed you for several meals. Where um, if you're buying packaged cheese, that probably just the cheese in this meal would cover half the cost of the entire I meal. I was when I was because I, I, I love cheese. <laughs> and you're liking it. It's good. The sour cream is dreamy. The sour cream is dreamy. That's great. That's a good, that's a good review. It smells amazing. Do you, do you, do you, do you, I am. I'm in line. I've tried to put some on their chairs, so they might have some. Anyone needs another napkin? So the sour cream's a big hit. I'm going to fill that up again. <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's surprising to find something with two simple ingredients taste so so delicious, and you know it's very inexpensive. Um, to make this much sour cream, traditional sour cream comes in a smaller container, right. and it's way more expensive than a box of tofu. You can, I usually buy my tofu from Jewel or Myers. They run sales on it. That's local stores here in town. They run sales on tofu all the time, and I buy like six of them and just keep it in my refrigerator. Um, can you freeze it? Yes, I have a recipe, a sweet and sour tofu that isn't uh, part of the course, Protective Diet Education, but there's a cooking video that's free for anyone to watch. I highly recommend watching it. It shows you how to use frozen tofu, because when you freeze tofu, it develops a completely different spongy texture that's typical of deep fried tofu in Asian dishes. But when you freeze it and defrost it, you can slice it and you can brown it in a pan without the use of any oil. And I show this example in the cooking video. It's really delicious to add to stir fries. Freezing it to use to make sour cream is not a good idea because it will get a spongy texture. But you've got two months per pack of tofu to use it. The expiration date is excellent. So have another one, if it, please. Please. <laughs> we have plenty. I make the hot sauce. Oh yes. <laughs> so do I. What's everyone's favorite of the of all of them? What's your favorite component? Sour cream. The sour cream? It is good. It's not good. Wow. Oh, you never thought tofu could taste good, right? One of my favorite but I love Mexican food. Um, and I do a lot myself to try and prevent video baking and frying stuff. Right. Um, at, at um, I found some cute little um, like flutes for making dishes for like you know salads, yeah. and I use corn just to soften it enough and put it in there and make it. Um, and then you've got you know a healthier. Right. You could make these tortillas into taco little mini taco salads mm -hmm. by putting them on the back side of a muffin tin. And there's videos on this on the internet, what to do with these. You can take them and bake them on your oven rack like this, and they'll turn into hard shell tacos. They're a little bit challenging to eat, and to be honest with you, we more often we eat just the baked tostadas because they're easy, they're fast. I can make, you know, three oven racks and feed Jerry really easily. He <laughs> eats a lot, so do I. But um, Mexican food, it's, it's so delicious, and it's it's definitely high in fat. It's one of the worst diets. Just getting a picture of your hand. It's Don't one worry. of the <laughs> easiest diets that I can convert over to a protective diet that's free of saturated fat. Really? Yeah, I have a recipe oh, coming out for, these aren't baked yet, right there. You can try one fresh, help yourself. Um, the, I have a recipe coming out for pozole, which is a traditional Mexican soup that's made with shredded pork and hominy, and it has a lot of fresh toppings on it. It's, it's, it's a soup that's in every Mexican family, in their home. It's a regular soup they make. So I wanted to offer that, because I think our comfort food favorites, if we don't have those traditional recipes available in healthy versions, 
we're going to fall off plan. It's like there's going to be that one day I want Mexican food or I want pizza. So I've come up with remakes of all these recipes so that you don't ever have to find yourself eating off plan. This is very different. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it. I love all the crunching. Help, help yourself to another one. These tostadas, I don't like to go by calories very often, but I know a lot of you are still counting calories um, or points. These tostadas are about 100 calories, if that, per tostada with all the toppings. Loaded? Loaded. <laughs> loaded. Each tostada, is. this is 50 calories. And with the amount of toppings that you're putting on there, I don't, I don't think you could even get to another 50 calories, but maybe, probably about 25 calories in toppings, so it's probably about 75 calories for a loaded tostada. So if I was eating these for dinner, I would probably eat five of them, maybe six. <laughs> and it would be fine. I love fine. to hear that, yes. I'm it would be fine. I'm an eater, and that was a big part of my challenge, was I love to cook, I'm a chef, I love to eat, and it was a major part of my day to come home and cook and make delicious food. Well, when I changed it over to food that was free of saturated fat and sugar and cholesterol, my heart disease just like vanished. Within three months, my cholesterol came down. My weight just shed, it just fell off. And I, in these pictures here, I was working out, I was doing oh my gosh, six spin classes a week, and I was maintaining this overweight body, and I was actually eating a vegan diet at the time. I know a lot of people think a vegan diet is super healthy and you're gonna lose weight, but there's oil in a vegan diet, there's sugar in a vegan diet, there's processed foods, those fake meats. Those fake meats are loaded with fats. So when we cut those out and we get back to real whole foods like beans and whole grains of corn tortillas, and tofu instead of sour cream, it's, you're reducing your calories, you're, it's, you're cutting them down by th to a third of what you were consuming before. But with my recipes, you're able to create these traditional dishes that you love. So that's what it's all about. Does anyone else have any more questions? They're, they're all full of tostadas. <laughs> I'm so She's sold. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm sold too. I've been eating this way for many years and we never go off plan because there's hundreds of recipes for everything. You can remake everything. So there's no reason except um, not wanting to be in the kitchen. And I find a lot of my students will say things like, they'll come to me, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching for people that are really in a bad way. They're living a very dangerous lifestyle, very high cholesterol, and this is an intervention. They're doing this, committing to this, because they have to make a change. Medicine's not helping them. They're still in a high risk. So they'll say, oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna cook every day. This is ridiculous. So I teach them how to batch cook. And I teach them one day a week to make a big pot of soup like we did in the last class, maybe double the batch, and then they have that, they can freeze some of it, or bake up you know, a couple dozen tostadas so when they get home from work, these are ready, and they have the cheese sauce in the refrigerator. So on Sunday, they do a lot of cooking. And then throughout the week, all they're doing is reheating or dishing it out. They're chopping up their ingredients for salad, so it's ready to go. And usually after doing it about 30 days, they've gotten into the swing of things. And they're like racing home from work to cook. These are people that never cooked, that lived their life going through a drive-through, and that's how they got into their poor health. They, were, they didn't know how to cook for themselves. Now I showed them a couple tricks, gave them a couple kitchen tools, and they're excited about cooking. They're having success with the efforts they're making in the kitchen are returning in health. And when they start putting that association together, they are more motivated to cook because they're actually seeing a result. A lot of times when we adopt um, a moderately healthy diet, we don't see those kind of results. I see dramatic results. If someone has uh, body fat to lose, it's generally about 10 pounds on average per month eating this way full time. Um, cholesterol, it drops anywhere between 30 to 50 points in the first 30 days. So when they're applying this, and it's, 
it seems like a lot of effort in the beginning and they're going to the doctor three months later and the doctor is giving them a high five um, and they're seeing we call it BCS, baggy clothes syndrome. They're walking down the street and they're pulling up their pants. Mm -hmm. After 30 days, this happens. That motivates them to say, hey, I'm doing something and it's producing results. A lot of us spend a lot of time in the gym and we're working out every day. And we're maintaining the same overweight weight like I was, struggling, sweating, breaking our backs. And then we are eating foods that are moderately healthy because most of us are, are taking the steps to eat healthier and we're not producing results. So I suggest that we go full stream ahead and we adopt the healthiest diet we can possibly apply and get life-changing results. And then it's worth the effort. Why cook healthy unless we're going to cook really healthy? So any more questions? <laughs> oh yes, help yourselves. I made mean, lots of tostadas so that we can make a meal of this. I love the nacho cheese. The cheese. <laughs> I, I'm sold. I mean, yeah. Great. First it's met great. Julie, she told us that you could make a cheese sauce without any cheese in it. And to this day, poor Emily's not here to try it. She did a spur of the moment vacation. Yeah, the coordinator well, here, Emily, Emily like, she like manages the whole she, center, she's, right? She's one she, of the managers. Um, what is her position title? Her, it's, it's like activities coordinator. Okay, so the activities. All for it, activities. So like healthy cooking, okay. the nutrition lectures. Yeah, when Emily and I first met, she was that. very excited about the cheese sauce, and she wanted, to, she couldn't wait to see the cheese sauce. So I made tostadas today for Emily, mm -hmm. and Emily's on vacation. Oh. So when she comes back, you guys have to tell her how good the cheese sauce Yeah, is. tell her, oh, the cheese sauce was so good, you missed out. And she was like, why did I go on vacation? <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, it's just it's amazing. Really good. Okay, I got my cheese problem solved. Cheese problem solved. Sour cream problem <laughs> solved. You saved some money too by eating eating these versions of it. And um, yeah, it's it's like I work with students from all different cultures, and as I have one-on-one -on -one students that I can learn from, I actually sometimes walk away from a coaching session, they think that they like they changed their life. They lost weight, they reversed their heart disease or diabetes, and they're thanking me, and I'm like, but I walked away and I learned how to make traditional Mexican food or traditional Indian food or whatever, wherever the person's from. Um, I'm working on, uh, what do they call it? I can't say it in Polish. The cabbage. Uh, well, the cabbage, cabbage rolls. Cabbage oh, rolls. Or so I'm working on that recipe. Well, oh my gosh. Blumky. It's, it's <laughs> cabbage rolls, and it's traditionally filled with rice and meat. Well, I'm changing the meat out for mushrooms, and I'm keeping keeping the seasonings the same. They're delicious. Try it with apples and raisins. Is that a traditional Polish recipe? I don't know, but oh, I good. make it with, if I don't want to add any meat. Right, you put that and in And I don't want a lot of rice. So I cut the rice down and add the fruit. All right. We are big, a big part of eating a protective diet is eating a lot of starches, a lot of whole grain starches, like the tortillas, or rice. If we're going to eat rice, we want to use whole grain rice, like brown rice. It could be whole grain basmati rice. It could be whole grain short grain brown rice or long grain brown rice. As long as it has that fibrous jacket on it, the brown rice, it will, it's not going to cause the raises by near sugar. So if you can get accustomed to the whole grain rice, same with whole grain pasta. I want you to switch from using the white pasta, to use the whole grain pasta. You're gonna feel fuller faster, and you're, you can have a quarter pound to a half a pound of pasta at every meal, as long as you're not topping it with fat sauces. So use, I have a recipe for tomato cream sauce. That's one of the free recipes. Fat-free Fredo, it's a beautiful Alfredo sauce that's made with this nutritional yeast. And soy milk, and we thicken it with cornstarch. It's, and it's full of garlic, it's delicious. Uh, my students call it restaurant quality. They're blown away by these recipes, but it just takes some innovation and some creativity. And I've done that for you to make this plan easy and for you to experience results with your health. That's most important. And enjoy your food. 
we should all be able to eat well and um, not feel like we're eating sprouts and beans. I mean, that's, there's no fun in that. Food, is, food should be enjoyable. It should be fun and pleasing and satisfying. Any sustainable plan has to include good food because if we don't have it, we're going to order pizza or we're going to go through the drive-thru or we're going to go to a family get-together or a party and eat cake if we don't have an alternative version of it. So. All right, well, we're going to wrap up the cameras. I think we're good to go. Thanks for joining us from home and take care. Best of health to you. Anyway,